We're in the process of getting the big picture on how to study the Bible. Remember, there are three basic steps. First of all, observation. That's where we ask and answer the question, what do I see? So we spend considerable time examining the text firsthand. Secondly, is the step of interpretation. And we had just begun to tell you what it is that you are looking for in the process of interpretation, where you ask and answer the question, what does it mean? And we said, first of all, you have to learn to ask the right questions. Don't ever hesitate questioning the Word of God. Not that it is God's Word, but that you can understand it for yourself. The second question in interpretation is how do you discover the right answers? And as we're going to see, the right answers come from the process of observation. But it's always your objective. What's the answer to this question? Is it answered in this passage? Or do we have to go to another passage to get a full answer to our question? And the third question is how to uncover the big picture. You see, it's easy to get lost in a forest because of the trees. And I find that many times when people say, I don't know the answer to this. I said, then why don't you climb a tree to get some perspective, to get the big picture. And when we start putting those parts together, then it's like a puzzle. When you finally have those last pieces, the beautiful puzzle becomes obvious to you. But there's a third step. It's the most neglected, and I believe the most needed. And that's the step of application, where we ask and answer the question, how does it work? Not does it work, but how does it work? It works because it's the scripture. And because it's the scripture, it works. This is God's answer to the problem. But don't ever forget what the goal is. The goal is not information, it's transformation. God's word is not written to make you a smarter sinner. It's written to make you just like the sun. So if you ever lose sight of the goal, then you bog down on all kinds of details. And you forget the truth of 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. So the Word of God is designed to invade every area of your life. And I always keep in mind a twofold objective. First, how does it work for me? My first question is not, oh, this is a wonderful passage of scripture. It's just what my students, it's just what my parishioners need. No, it's just what I need. And when I discover how that truth works in my life, then I am best equipped to share it in the life of others. Otherwise, I find myself something of a hypocrite. And if someone were to ask me, does that work for you? No, it really doesn't, but you ought to try it. People are saying, I think you better test it yourself. So that leads to the second objective. Not only how does it work for me, but how does it work for others. If it doesn't work for me, it probably won't work for others. And I've discovered the more time I spend in the Word of God, 
the more excited I get about its application to my life, the better equipped I am to share it for others. And I'm sharing it on the basis of authenticity. Not as a perfect person, but as a person who is in process of developing Christ-likeness in my life. And out of the overflow of my life, I am prepared to share it in the life of others.